What is up folks, Justin Kana here. It is any wonder that it's taken me this long to make this video because it's something I go over people in coaching calls all the time. It's something I get DMs and emails about very frequently. And in the spirit of wanting to make things as valuable and accessible and free to consume and hopefully help you as possible, I figured why just not make this video, do the process start to finish as though I were looking for a stage or a to make my next move more or less. And this is the process that I take almost everybody through that that is in that moment of transition from one restaurant to another. And oftentimes these moves, these transitions involve location changes as well. So you aren't working with your normal network that you're used to interacting with. So you feel like you're starting from zero. You don't necessarily feel like you have any connections. And oftentimes too, I find that this is also a moment of transition into a different league. Like you're going from the small gastro pub or bistro into maybe Michelin territory. You're going from the small spot where maybe you cut your teeth a little bit into the big leagues. So hopefully some of the little nuggets that come out and this is in tandem with an email that I literally just sent today. That's why I'm like, just turn the camera on. Let's make this video. This will either offer you more clarity or it will give you something to think about going into 2021. All right, jumping into the computer here. This is more or less where I recommend you start. You can certainly do this on your phone, but this just for the video, I'm going to do it on my computer here. This is, uh, this is the answer that I literally emailed someone this morning. So I'll go into that in a, in a, in a little bit. But if I was say starting in my career, I was moving from where I grew up, Wisconsin, to San Francisco. That's gonna be the more or less focus of this case study. And I recommend to start that you set some parameters for yourself of goals that you'd like to hit when reaching out to new places, as well as figure out what that concentric circle is. So for this example, let's write two star Michelin or above using high quality California produce. So maybe that's our starting point. And then in addition to that, what we would be, you know, what's our B list, right? So that would be like one star Michelin or very trendy bib gourmand. And the mentality there is that you're making sure that if you don't get your two Michelin star or three Michelin star place, you're not completely uh, left in the dark, especially if you're going to be moving to a place where you don't have any other connections. Because I would rather you, and to, to some people like one Michelin star or a Bib Gourmand place is like they're over the moon about it. Maybe your goals are different. But what I don't like to see is when it's like factors outside of your control. So the restaurant just happens to be fully staffed or maybe because of COVID restrictions, they aren't keeping as big of a team. And that influences you not being able to have a job when you move. And then you have to get desperate and then take a job at a place that you wouldn't be all that excited about. So by preparing for that in advance, you're almost making it so that even if you we're going for the two or three Michelin star spot, if you get the one star place, you're still going to be happy because you know you're working towards the greater good. So from here, I'll start to build a list of 10 to 20 restaurants. And this goes into the answer that I gave here. So I said, start with my email template. I'm not sure if you've seen the video yet. It's linked down below. And there's also a free PDF that goes along with it. And you can tweak it to make it sound like you. I think it's almost up to a thousand people that have downloaded it. Shout out in the comments if you are someone who man like is in charge of stages and you've gotten one of my stagiaire email templates that's been customized from another chef. I'd love to hear that down low in the comments and how that story went. So from here, my advice is make a list of 10 to 20 restaurants that you wanna reach out to. Through this process, you'll find that you might be emailing restaurants that you don't actually want to stage at, but it will decrease your fear of rejection from the truly important ones for you. And this was more or less contextual to this person, but I say, and funny enough, in the same way that you've made the move to a less intense environment, you might find that restaurants on your B list have alumni from ones on your A list. Do you see how that could kind of work out? And I'll give some examples as we get into restaurant examples. So I'm starting with my list of 10 to 20 restaurants. So I will open tabs, just a flurry of tabs. So I'll start with the Michelin Guide. I'll do uh, Eaters uh, 38. I know that um, Grubhub does a lot of good recommend. Listen to me, Grubhub. It's Grub Street in New York. And they have another, uh, you know, kind of like rating ranking system. You could do World's 50 Best if you want. I know that that more or less isn't always city specific. I know they have like their lower tier list as well. So open up all the tabs that are going to give you the big biggest, like widest net cast of restaurants. And then from here, I'll just start scrolling through. So like Gary Danko, that that's like a, that matches my list quite a bit. I know A16 does. I'll open that in a new tab. Coquetta, Bar Cren. And so, so, so you can see here that like different ones have stars, different ones have like uh, Bib Gourmands. Atelier Cren would be great to get into. Qua would be great to get into. Quint sounds great. 
and you just go down the list, right? So I'm gonna just go to one more tab just so that we don't make this video too, too exhausting. Let's do Aquarello as well, because that's a two star. So that'll add to our list. Same thing with uh, Eater, right? So a lot of these places are more on the casual end of things. This doesn't match with the goal that I've set for myself, but I know that the progress is very well uh, regarded. Their produce is pretty off the charts. I'll read about this place called Nightbird. This sounds kind of cool. So I'll open their website. Rich Table, I know, is just like a legendary staple in San Francisco. Zuni Cafe is good, but it's not quite as far on the fine dining side of things as I would think. Might not be a bad idea, though. And let's do Lazy Bear. All right, so I got all these open. Oh, pop-ups. I love your pop-ups. Let's see here. So I think this is a good enough example. You kind of get the picture of where I'm going with this. So let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's see it here. I'll say Gary Danko, A16, Coquetta, The Progress. So you would get this all the way from 10 to 20, right? But I'm gonna show you how to, and this is a question that comes up pretty frequently through DMs and through emails is like, how do I know that I'm emailing the right place? Uh, at the restaurant because sometimes you have like an info at or careers at email. Some places go through third party uh, hiring services like culinary agents. And so I'm gonna show you kind of like the process that I'll go through to make sure that I'm getting things to the right place. So for Gary, Gary Danko's site. So I went to info and you'll have two kind of sectors here. So one is for contacting for guests, which you don't always wanna reach out to because the person there isn't the one making hiring decisions, especially in regards to stages. But so here, let's see, I have a uh, information page. So I'll come back to my, to my Google Doc and I'll start to paste information. So then you're almost creating like a profile for each restaurant and then you can kind of keep track of, um, you know, who you reached out to and who you haven't. So a lot of places, as I kind of alluded to, have another tab down here called careers. So if I click on that, let's see what comes up there. Are you seeking a rewarding career? So there's, there's another email. So then I will copy this and then I will replace that with this one. Boom, perfect. Then I come back here, email your, you can also mail your resume. That's an interesting option. So I can copy this and I can put this in here. Let's talk, let's, let's try to find one of these that doesn't actually have an explicit like hiring uh, place here. So A16 seems kind of like that place here. So let's see, we have this email. So let's copy that, paste that in here. So there is an info one but it doesn't seem like there's that much of a hiring specific area on the website. So that's an interesting um, dilemma. Let's go ahead and open up their Instagram. And I'll sometimes go through here and see like who have they tagged in their photos. So I'll open up a couple of posts. Sometimes ones that have the team in the photo can sometimes have, we're hiring, please send your resumes to blank. Like I certainly have uh, worked at restaurants where you don't always advertise that you're hiring on the website, especially except for when you are. And when you are hiring, it's very important that you get people to reach out to you. So you can kind of switch the, um, switch the view if you're on your phone so you can scroll through quickly. I'm obviously on desktop, so that's a little bit different. So you're looking for things like this, where it says like, we're hiring. That's not necessarily all there. This is a team, this like, that that has a person in it. Usually people will go into things like that. Sometimes you have to scroll all the way down to when they were like in the, their beginning stages because that email still might exist. Okay, so let's go into some of these posts. So who's tagged here? So then I'll go to this guy. So it's chef, student, teacher, no subject. And sometimes he'll have the same thing. Sometimes he'll say we're hiring. So you creep on this guy. And this is like the nature of the internet. Final weeks of salad season, blah, blah, blah. So not necessarily. But then you're looking, you're, you're not looking to spam these people, right? So you, you might find, and let's try to find one, um, maybe at uh, Lazy Bear. This is also a common one. I just hopped over to Lazy Bear site. So you'll have all these different emails. Don't use these ones. Keep looking because you might say, oh, I need to email contact at Lazy Bear SF. When in reality, if you just would have kept reading, you would see that there's a job section. Lazy Bear is always looking for great front and back house employees. 
We also host stages in all positions. Amazing. Like that's like the best uh, thing that you can look for because a lot of times places don't advertise that they take stages. So this is great. Email your resume as an attachment with your cover letter in the body. So this is like 101. They're trying to see if you can follow directions. And so it's very important that you email jobs at lazybearsf.com. You do exactly what they say. Email your resume as an attachment with your cover letter in the body. So that means attach your resume as a file, a PDF, a doc, whatever, and then your cover letter's in the body. So that's more or less where my stagiaire email template comes in. And so that's like very explicit. And I have a feeling that they use that. Like I've certainly done that when I hire freelancers to help me out with content stuff. I will almost include these interesting kind of pre-tests for people because if someone emails events at lazybearsf.com and has their email in the body of the thing and attaches their cover letter, it's like they didn't follow the instructions. And so if they aren't able to do that before you even meet them, what does that say about how they're going to do on day one? And I know that being tech savvy and being kitchen savvy are two very different things, but more or less like the principle applies. So let's say that I didn't, I wasn't able to find that, right? So let's say I wasn't able to find um, that specific tab on Lazy Bear. I go to Lazy Bear itself. Um, so here, so this is a, this is a, this is a great example. So I've got a couple here. So I'm opening up tabs of uh, pe people on the team. So if I can see that, no, this person isn't tagged, unfortunately. So let's see. Let's see if I can search them. So I will sometimes search. Boom. I think I found him. Yep, 24 years old doing that pastry thing for Lazy Bear. So then I will sometimes go in, like, if I was starting out from zero, I had zero connections, I would try to spend the next like three to four weeks engaging with Chef Evan's content in a way that is valuable, not spammy. So maybe go back, don't go back all the way and like make it blatantly obvious that you're trying to like get, get in his, uh, get on his good side, but you'll go and see like, this is a pretty cool shot of chocolate, you know, going. So then you'll go into the content and you'll see this Sunday I'll be doing a live chocolate tasting on Zoom. So maybe you'll say, I miss this class. When is the next one? I'm really interested. Like if you're going for a pastry position, you want to interact with Evan in as many ways as you can. So then you'll take a look at this and, and comment in a valuable way. You'll take a look and see like who's uh, being a good commenter. Connection chocolates. They like they seem to be involved in this in some way, shape, or form. So then maybe you go out and you buy some of their chocolate, you try it, and then you say, I really liked XYZ flavor palette on this chocolate. And then you're not spamming this person's Instagram, but you're getting your name into their mind. And so this is almost like a long-term play from the sense of like when Chef Evan sees your email, your resume with your name come across their desk. If you're going for a pastry position there, if they've seen you on Instagram interacting and DMing them and asking them thoughtful questions in a positive way, they're much more likely to gravitate towards your name if there's like 15 resumes coming across his desk every single day. Continuing on here, maybe there's another channel. If you're really into Lazy Bear that you can follow, I just opened their um, Instagram here. Mathiasen is a really great winery and I love their wines. But see, so they have this other account that doesn't get have that many followers, but maybe it's more like, see, so maybe you can take a look at this and you can copy this and paste that. And maybe chef, or maybe were they tagged in that photo? Maybe that's what happened. Yep, so if I go here, so look, these are not, not almost everybody, but there's like a ton of their chefs tagged in this photo. So if you can find a way to positively interact with these people and get to know them, then when it comes time to them, like if you just provide so much value to Jacob Andrew Brown, and he's just like constantly responding to you on Instagram, and he happens, then he happens to ask you what you're up to uh, in your career. You say, oh, well, I'm actually moving to San Francisco. I'd have a feeling that that would be a great way to get your foot in the door versus just trying to email like everybody else through that site. And it's a little bit more of a long play. Like it requires more work. It re requires more nuance. But I can almost guarantee that it's going to give you more, you know, kind of positive returns in, in the long run. And so I would tag all of those people. So if let's see, I miss that. Um, so like this guy, I would paste then in here. So I would say uh, Sam, 
and then I would paste his Instagram link. And so then as I'm going through, if I've sent the emails to everybody and it's been a week or so and I haven't gotten a response yet, maybe it's time after I check off a couple of these places from my list to go in and see if this guy would actually be someone worth following and engaging with because, you know, I actually have narrowed it down quite a bit and Lazy Bear does seem like a really good option. I do want to go into the secondary tip that I gave the person that asked this question because I think it's really important, especially if you're intimidated by restaurants that seem like they're out of your league. What did I write here? I said the biggest secondary tip I can give is to request for an observational stage if there's a place that feels a little out of your league. You aren't asking to cook or prep, you just want to watch service. That way you're able to meet the staff, get a behind the scenes for yourself, and nine times out of 10, you end up doing prep because an extra set of hands is so valuable in kitchens. And this can come through in the subject of your email to these places. You can, you know, just ask it as kind of a one-off question after you've built some rapport with someone on Instagram. Hey, do you guys do observational stages? And I find that that's either a yes or a no, which is really, really valuable because then at least you got a response from them. You have a thread in their inbox where they can see that they've responded to this person before. So that if say you do need to go stage at the progress before you get into Lazy Bear, you can kind of like build your skills at the progress staging there, uh, you know, either on your days off or right when you move to that city. And then after you feel like you've built some skills, if Lazy Bear says, no, we don't do observational stages, we only do working stages, you can then feel like you have enough skills to bring to them and say, all right, I'm ready. Do you guys have any dates available that I could come in and stage? So to summarize, because I know that that was a lot of kind of talking and screen switching. So build your list of 10 to 20 restaurants in the city that you want to go to with the constraints that you have in mind. Then, if you feel like you're still really intimidated, ask for an observational stage. I think that those two answers in tandem, if you are willing to do the work and kind of do the networking required, I think that will more or less solve a lot of the questions that a lot of you have. Also, just keep in mind that a lot of this comes down to timing. Hiring and staff capacity at places changes literally from week to week, as I'm sure many of you know. So just because you get a rejection at one place doesn't mean that that place has to be completely crossed off your list forever because in a month they might have two line cooks leave and then all of a sudden they would love your set of hands as a stagiaire. If you've had a lot of success that would help other people watching this video, please leave them down low in the comments because I'm sure that people that are on this journey would love to hear your suggestions. I'm just one guy, I don't have all the answers, but I do have the luxury of being able to speak with multiple people in multiple different cities with different goals as well. And so I know that a lot of these principles work across the board, regardless of what you're working towards. If you enjoy content like this, I have an industry podcast called The Emulsion that publishes episodes every week where I talk to industry professionals, and I want to kind of start going back into industry news again. I know that people who are fans of the podcast haven't seen episodes like that all that frequently, but I am trying to re-strategize in a way that makes sense going into 2021. I don't want the podcast solo episodes to be gossipy. That's more or less not the goal. Also, if you got some value from this free to consume video, I would appreciate some support on Patreon. If you're able, that is linked up down below in the description. Another way to support this completely free is just to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed it or got some value. That's it for me today. Thank you so much for your attention. I will be down below in the comments answering your questions as they arise. My name is Justin Kana. Have a good one.